Go ahead. Morning, everybody. And Will Joyner from Liberty High School. My fourth year there, working there. Uh, pretty fortunate that Mike reached out to us, get a chance to come out and talk to young ball players, and like he said, try to bridge the gap between uh, younger ball players and their high school teams. So appreciate you having me out. Great, great coaches out here, a lot of experience, and so just happy to be here. I think if I stand up, you won't be able to see my face. So, uh, I'm Bruce Cox. I'm the head baseball coach at Kingwood Park High School. Uh, this is my fifth year there. Uh, very blessed to be um, in, in the Houston area uh, with, with a lot of great coaches, a lot of great competition. Um, just uh, you know, really looking forward to sharing a little bit, like a little bit of insight into what we do at our program, and hopefully you guys can take something back uh, to your teams. Um, you know, be it mechanics or philosophy, whatever the case may be. Uh, and help these kids be more prepared for high school baseball. Eric Matthews um, from Tassie City High School. I've been there for going on 11 years. Um, been in high school coaching for 16. Um, yeah, I'm here to here to help you. You know, gain some information. You know, we're all you know, and I'm excited to be here because I get to gain some information too. And you know, at 40 years old, I still continue to learn, and I want to learn from everybody. At the same time, I want to be able to give you. You know some information that might help you along the process. You know, I've, I've, I have a son who has been through, you know, the youth baseball and all that stuff, and I've seen the the goods and you know, and the challenges, and I know what he's <coughs> looking, looking into moving forward. And you know, at, at, the, at the high school level, and you know, as a as a parent, all you want is the best for your kids. And you know, as a coach, I know sometimes that gap. You don't think that. That we're on that same on that same path as you as a parent, but we are. Um, you know, it's it's about making them better men. It's about helping them to to cultivate the love of the game that they have, um, and help to teach them you know the, the right way to do things. And, and you know that's what we're here for. And if they get better at baseball along the way, then that's fantastic. Great guys, thank you so much. And uh, and I appreciate all you guys coming out too. So, what I wanted to start out with, kind of the format that we're going to do. I got I took a take a look at my notes, guys. Give me just a sec. We got the food over there, all the drinks that you want. You don't need to raise your hand on your kids. You know, go out there, get it. If you have to go to the bathrooms, the bathrooms are all the way down there on the left. What we're going to do once we break from here is we're going to go outside. The format is Two, two people will discuss things here, and then we'll go back outside, discuss some things out there, go through some drills, and then we'll finish up inside with an open answer and question, question and answer type thing. But before we start, I want to pull these guys on the other side of the bridge, man. Let's bring them on this side. We're not going to keep them on that side. The whole point of this is getting them together. So I want them to pull the chairs on. They're going to sit on this side. And remember, these are not only their, your coaches, they'll be your mentors. These guys are going to teach you what it's like to play the big game of baseball, and most importantly, how baseball helps you in life. They're doing it for a living. Good job, guys. Thank you. All right, so what I'm going to do first is <coughs> let me introduce myself since I introduced everybody else. Uh, my name's Mike Linsky. I came down here when Enron was uh, just about ready to shut down is when I came down to Houston. Uh, my wife is over there, that's Laura, that's my son Matthew, and I have a daughter Anna, that she's still sleeping. She's enjoying the sleep. I uh, came down here in 2000, and long story short, I got out of baseball. Uh, it was hard for me to adjust leaving baseball to go into the real world until I found another passion. And my passion wasn't this at the time, it was like advertising and promotions. That's why you see all this stuff, the car, you know, all that crazy stuff. But long story short, is I now have the ability to go back to my original passion, which is baseball games. So I feel like I'm going back in the game to help you guys out because I'm doing this 100% now to help you all out. So one of the first ways I want to help you out is I was a pitcher. I was a left-handed pitcher with the Padres and the Orioles. I got drafted out of high school by the Pirates in the 21st round, and then that opened up the door to recruiting, which is what I kind of do for work now too. Except for when you're drafted, colleges back then would just hand you scholarships because they figured if a big league team was on a draft, you're good enough to play on a Division I team. Now it's totally different, guys. It's very, very competitive. But I was fortunate enough. I got a full ride to school. I went to JMU in Virginia. 
I graduate with a sports management degree. And a lot of times when I do lessons, I'm quirky, I'm left-handed. You, you'll see that when you guys play. I know, who else? You're left-handed too, aren't you, Eric? Are you lefty? Damn. I thought you were lefty. You see a lot of lefties just kind of on the team as you go through the game. They just maybe wear their hat just a little bit different than what you do, but we're left-handed. So I'm a lefty, so you don't have to deal with me today. I teach a lot out of the box. So I keep this around there because I want you to understand what the UCL is, what TJ is. You know what TJ is? What is it? Tommy John. You know who Tommy John is? Read the book, The Arm. It's a great book. It, well, I don't read them. I listen to them. Uh, Tommy John is the tendon, or the guy who was the first one to replace the tendon around his, his elbow. And now uh, there's 12-year-olds that are doing it. Why? I mean, that's the big debate right now. Is it overuse? Is it throwing heavy balls? Is it this, that? Everybody's talking about it. But why they're so concerned about it is it's because it's you guys. It's our kids. And we never, we're playing a sport that we don't want to hurt our kids. So I teach you guys what this is about. The owner, the owner and the radius is down here. This tendon wraps up. If it happens at your age where you hurt it bad, and hopefully you have good mechanics and it won't, because your bones are real brittle, it's not going to rip. It'll tear off. It tears off your bone. That's why your body defends because your bones are brittle. You're not, your growth plates, right? You, you wiggle around. So that tendon normally doesn't rip at your age. It pulls off the bone. And even the growth plates, which is one that happened to one of the kids up here. Why? Not because he threw the ball 100 miles an hour, because he didn't rest. He just played and played and played. Every weekend, every weekend, I don't play, I love it, I love it. Oh man, well, it's like anything in life. You do too much of it, it's not good. You eat too much chocolate, it tastes good, but you get sick. Same thing here. You throw, throw, throw every weekend. You're a catcher and a pitcher, catcher and a pitcher, and, and, you're, and you're playing every weekend. Something will probably happen. So be careful. you got one body, and it's your body. So as I teach lessons, I explain that, because you don't know if these kids ever want to be. I mean, who knows what a PT is? They make good money, and they're in sports. Physical therapist. And so I tell them what the owner, what the radio, who knows? Who knows what they may want to do later in life, but they'll have an edge when they're in anatomy class because they remember when they played baseball. So I teach those kind of things. I want you guys to understand that when I go through the mechanic side of it, you'll hear me talk about moving your arm different ways. I'll show you how all that works. But remember, it's all about understanding and feeling it. So I believe in teaching with the senses. This right here, King of the Hill. I, I was out in Anaheim, I room with this guy. This guy right here. And now guys, this was supposed to be an adult swim. So there's some kids here, but I'm still gonna make an adult swim. Can you handle that? You sure? All right. Rich Duno out of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Looks just like that picture. He gave me these because Pete Rose was having a, uh, a golf ally and he wanted to get his word down there because he started at the top with this. And I'm showing you this because this is using one of the senses, and I just want you to think outside of the box and see what else you can think of. Because he thought of this. In his garage, that one drink that makes you wiser. You know what I'm talking about? What's that one drink that makes you wiser? First name's Bud. That's what he had. He drank a couple beers in the garage. Started thinking. And I was telling that kid, I was telling that kid on the mound to feel like you're driving the mound backwards, and he did it. He pushed the mound backwards. And so he's an engineer, he's, he's got a background in engineering. And he said, man, I just I, I kind of put something together. I got one metal plate on another metal plate with this and that, blah, 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 blah. He started doing this and I came up with this. So that if I don't drive with my back leg, I hear nothing. But I know I got to use my legs in pitching because if you don't use your legs, what you don't use? And that's what happens. You've got to use your legs in pitching. You've got to. If you don't, you'll last for a short period of time. The first thing I look at for these guys that do not use their legs, there's two phases of pitching. You have a stride phase from where I start to where I land. Make it real simple. The throwing phase is that. To make it real simple, if you don't want to end up like that, don't throw before you land. Because most people do. If they don't use their legs, then they overcompensate with their upper body. And what happens is, before they land, they throw their arm out. When they throw their arm out, this goes out before they land, this lags behind. And that's how you get hurt. So for you guys, the ideal place to land, 
is what science says. Either here, whether you're a pointer, or whether you're a shielder, no matter, this has to be closed, and this has to be here. That's what science says, and I'll say that, that's science, or I'll say that's data. In other words, I'll say it's my opinion, but that's data. They say you don't hurt your arm when you're in that quarter of composition. Now, there's guys that come up to here, but some of those guys have higher t tissue thresholds than some of the other guys. In other words, your tendon might be stronger than your tendon. What makes that? Genes. Ain't no, you can't work out a tendon. You can work the muscles around the tendon to help strengthen that, like the heavy balls we were talking about, Steve. That's one of the things that helps, you know, forearms, curls, this and that. You can strengthen all that uh, tissue around that tendon to make it stronger, but you can't strengthen the tendon. You can't do it. It's the God-given gift that you've given that you've been given. But what I want to do is I want to look at somebody's mechanics. We have a lefty. You got no lefties here? All right. Um, let's do this. I'm going to do me here real quick. I'll shut this off and I'll do me 